God and welcome once again to Daily Manor, this daily featured presentation brought to you by St. Mark that is designed to help to feed your faith and starve your doubts. My name is Terrence Gray. I'm blessed and privileged to have the opportunity to be both teacher and presenter for this week's segment as we study collectively God's word. The text says, if any of you has a dispute with another, that he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more uh, the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters appoint as judges even men of little account in the church I say this to shame you is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers but instead one brother goes to law against another and this is in front of unbelievers. I mean, this uh, thus far the word of God. I, I hope, I hope that, I hope that we grasp Paul as he reiterates, because that's what he's doing. These points, um, the point being, here's a man who involves himself with his father's wife. It's such a diabolical act. Uh, but it's also more ludicrous for the church to be taking pride in the action. They're cheering it. They're celebrating it. And um, Paul said that can't happen. That's not how we're supposed to be. That's not who we are. That's not the God we represent. So he struggles with it. In his struggle, he challenges the church to step forward to do the right thing and to do the admonishment amongst itself. Spiritually, turn him over to Satan. Another way, deal with him with inside of the church. Spank his hand. Let him know he has done wrong. Do not be ashamed to address him. It's important. Well, Paul comes back and says, well, you got to recognize this now. Uh, we need to stop trying to turn things over to, that, to the people who are of federal authority or the people who are the authority with inside the culture of which you serve. Because don't you realize we who make up the church are going to be the quote unquote judges of the world? And we're the ones that's going to handle disputes in the days to come? Are we the people to whom even angels must come before? Do we not realize that we are the persons who are going to judge? the ungodly and so it don't make no sense for the ungodly to be judging the saints when the saints are supposed to be managing even the ungodly then he comes right back to say we're the ones that's judging the world and since we're going to judge the world we are competent that means we got good sense to manage trivial cases or we can handle small stuff in essence there's something called destiny eternity life eternal that's very weighty on one hand over against uh, that which you deal with from day to day which the scripture wants to call trivial can therefore be handled with a different array of what we call tact or insight when clearly in all honesty to determine how one will spend eternity and their destiny is one thing how one is going to function from day to day down here is another. And yet Paul says we are smart enough, we are weighty enough, we are gifted enough to handle the matters of life in the world. So surely you can handle the stuff that you encounter from day to day. Well, here's what Paul continues to argue, and he argues in such a good manner. He, he, he tells us that I am not attempting to shame you. That's what he says in verse number five. It's possible that there's nobody among you 
wise enough to judge a dispute between believers. He says, there's a possibility y'all just ain't got the kind of wisdom or the insight to rationalize the issue, or you have not been able to bring that issue to pass. You have not been able to state articulately what you're dealing with. And so Paul is trying his best to bring down the expectations and to say, maybe, you know, y'all don't know how to do this. Maybe I'm having an expectation of you to do something that you have not yet learned. But then Paul realizes also that I know these people. They do have the, sight, the insight, the knowledge, the wisdom to do it. They just have not done it. And every now and then, I think God gets upset with us when God knows we know what to do but refuse to do it. We know how to do it but refuse to do it. And I think God sometimes looks at us and says, no, I expect you to get the job done. Somebody else who don't have your talent, your gifts, your graces, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I may have to let them pass. But you, I can't let you pass because I know you know better. I know that you have the ability to do better and I expect better from you. And I hear me asking and pleading and petitioning you, the God who tells us, the unbelievers must stand in front of us. The God who tells us that we are going to have to be in the seats to judge the world. We have to get our minds ready to deal with those from day-to-day -day issues that we have to hear, filter, and through the eyes of faith, figure out how to move forward. And trust me, it's a challenge. But God will give you that wisdom. Well, let me tell you, thank you once again for your time. And thank you also for being with us. I pray you've been blessed as I have once again by our broadcast and by this time. And I do look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. Until then, God bless. <laughs>